Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. It is time for block number 20, the final block for the quilt block party. If you're not familiar with this series, there is a playlist link down below in the description box and also in the comments. Just as a quick reminder, this series consists of 20 cohesive blocks. I have been picking from a predetermined basket of scraps so that all the blocks kind of look similar. Some are big successes, some I really don't care for. <laughs> We're sewing on a foundation to stabilize the fabrics, just makes it easier, and it's all crazy quilt style. So today, I know some people said, ooh, you gotta go out with a bang. I'm trying not to go out with any kind of a bang. I wanna just take it easy. But I think I came up with an idea that might look different without too much work. Usually we start with something in the center or somewhere on there and we work around it. We're going to do that again today. But this piece that's going in the middle, we're going to do foundation work on that. So we're going to be building this little block and then adding it to our other block. Huh? Pretty cool, don't you think? So let me just pick out some scraps and I'll show you what I'm going to do. I did want to mention that this fabric is very lightweight, so even if I do some foundation work on here, it's not going to really add to the bulk or the stiffness of the foundation piece. And I also want to remind you that I used this fabric, which is kind of thick. I believe it is a wool blend. And I only used it because I had an entire bolt of it that I would never use, so I used it as my foundation piece. Normally, you just want to work on regular cotton. It's the best, not stretch fabric. However, if you do work on something heavier, you don't necessarily need to add batting. It just makes a nice quilted blanket. Here's what I'm going to do. This is in my scraps. This is a little strip set that we worked on. I'm going to use this on this. So I'm just thinking of this as its own little block, but then I'll be using it for the center of the bigger block. So I want to put that here and I'm going to add and make stripes this way. Let's actually move it up a little bit. I'm going to go make stripes this way and then I don't know what I'm going to do on the top and bottom yet. But we need to add to this. Now if you don't have a little strip set like this, you could start by laying down one piece and then you know, adding another piece on each side and just doing that. But since I have this already, I'm using it. Or you could just go ahead and sew a bunch of strips together and then put it here. But I like the fact that I'm using that little scrap. So let's do something with color on each side of that. How about a little bit of this? Like there. How about a little bit of this? All right, same old, same old. I am going to flip this like this and sew right here. I will do the same with the other side and then I will trim it the way I want. I'm going to start on this side, put right sides together. And remember with foundation piecing, you always start your needle where the bottom fabric starts and then you stop your needle where the bottom fabric stops. I pressed this open. Now I could just finish this off, you know, with these two, but I want to add another piece of color to each side. I'm going to just trim this and it'll give me room for one more. Same here. How about I go this way? So you can pretty much just build your centerpiece any way you want. I kind of just used ideas from previous blocks. I had done a block where I did like up and down this way and then across this way and I'm kind of sort of going to do that with this one. But now I just want two more pieces. I think I'm going to repeat this one. And what can we do on this side? I'm going to use a piece of that. And now we have this. At this point I'm going to just flip it to trim. And then I'm going to trim this way. Now I was thinking of framing this with a little bit of the gingham, like there and there. Just looking to see if I had enough scraps, and I do. I'm going to be trimming this, but I'm going to put this piece there and this piece there. And I have this. And 
I guess I'm going to stick to wonky and let me see. I'm going to kind of trim this one at an angle. This one too. Just a little bit at an angle. I could keep building stripes this way or to be different, we could just finish it off with a solid piece here and here. Just one big piece, get it over with. I want it something that's not going to compete too much with these prints. I could use the ribbed pink or we have been using this solid blue but we don't have it in too many places. Let me see if I have any scrap sizes. I'm going to make my own scraps. I think I might like that. Like this and then a piece here. Let's do. It's really a little bit more conservative than I like but I'm going with it. Sandy would be proud of me. Hi Sandy. So I'm going to put this one here and this one down here. Hold your horses. I'm taking it back. I remembered I have this very lightweight blue with some pattern in it. And there's a piece of it right here. I'm going to use this because it just adds a little bit without being overwhelming. So I'm going to do that here and then also here. So I failed the conservative test. Sorry, Sandy. <laughs> After I sewed this side at the machine, I just went ahead and cut around it and then I added a piece to this side and I pressed it open and let's see what we got. So I'm going to just, uh, you know, just trim it. And I'm not going to sew around it like I do because I don't need to. We're going to be sewing other fabrics down. But oh my goodness, can we stop for a second? I love this. I don't know why, but it looks like something shooting in the sky, like these are little stars or something. I love it. I would have liked to have made a whole big block like this. And I totally think this fabric with just a little bit of print is better than the solid plain. Is there even room in the world for solids? I don't know. We're going to put this in the center here somehow, some way. It could be completely off or it could be diamond or it can be off to the side. I'm going to do it something like that. And then I'm thinking to make this stand out, I would like to frame it all the same color on four sides. So let's do that and then we'll do something funky around that. So I don't know, do we want to frame the whole thing with the gingham? I don't know. What if we used this blue? No, don't like. Something different, don't like. I'm not using pink satin. I'm not going to let that give me a hard time on my last block. This is busy, but it would make a frame and it would have color. This is an option. About the tie-dye. I think I'm going with the tie-dye. And since I'm going to be working with kind of narrow strips, I'm going to go ahead and put some fusing on the back of this because this is stretchy and I want no headaches today. So I just added a piece of fusing and I'm going to, uh, let's see, just start here. I'm going to go this way. I'm going to just start here. I'm going to sew across and then I will come back and trim it. Of course, I totally want something kind of wonky and a little bit wide. I don't know, have we ever started in the center with a four sided? I can't remember. Okay, I'm going to work on this side now. Right there, like that. So, we have this. I'm going to, let's see, go out this way. Might have to make some more, but I got a strip long enough here. So let's do this one here. Now we need one more. I'm going to add some more fusing to this. Okay, let me just cut this somewhat generously so I can put this piece down. How do we want it? Like this, right here. Sewing. Let's go this way with this one. Now, I don't know what I feel like doing if I wanted to do something uh, with a strip set. Let me think a minute. 
I think I'm going to just end in regular crazy quilt fashion. I think. What do you think? I think I will. So let's just get started. Now I'm just going to put any old fabric. And I'm going to work on two sides at once so I don't have to get up for every time to press this. So I'm going to put this on this end and this at this end. This piece is going off the edge, so let's just go to the back to trim it. And then this guy, let's see. Go a little bit this way, and then let's go, let's go this way. <gasps> Look what I did for the first time. I cut my foundation off. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna go and do a zigzag right there and put that back together. I could tell when I was cutting that it felt different. So let's just do zigzag here, see if that helps. I'm just making sure the needle goes on each side of the cut. Another thing I could have done is just put a piece of fusing there. And you know what? Even though I did this, which looks pretty darned good, I'm going to put a piece of fusing sticky side down right here and I'm going to press it on there. I'm kind of glad that happened so I can show you how it's easy to fix stuff like that. Now this is on there. It's also sewn. Doesn't hardly show at all on the back side but again this is a foundation. This is not a backing. So this is never going to be seen in your final project. That's going to be just as good as new. I used little scraps that I can just trim. So all is good. This time I won't cut it. <laughs> what we're gonna put over here? Oh, let's add some gingham. How about I do a piece here and a piece here. I'm gonna make it narrow. So but let's actually just cut it. Let's cut it in half now. Not in half, but you know what I mean. Let's do it at a diagonal. Okay, that's gonna give me a piece for this side and a piece for this side. Let me just show you up close. See? And look at on the back. Look how neat it is. You can barely see it. You, if you wanted, you could have added the fusing first to stick it together. And then if you wanted, you could have gone and done a zigzag just to reinforce it. Hey, like that. Back to straight stitch. We only have a little bit left to cover. We have this to cover on this side, and we can finish off with one piece here and one piece here. So let me see what I'm going to use. I think I'm gonna end with this in this corner, and I'll also use it in this corner. And then I think I'll put some more of the pink snake skin or reptile skin here. Let's just do that. I did two corners and I'm going off the edge, so I'm just going to trim this way. Now I still would like to end with this. I don't know if I will have enough here. Oh yes, I should. I'm going to go put this like that. I'm going to trim on this side. Oh, we're actually done. We need to square this up. Just going to cut this to 13-ish inches. And now I am going to go so close to the edge all the way around. Are we ready? I don't know if I'm gonna be blown away, but let's look. I really like it. It is certainly different. I'm not jumping up and down for joy, but I do like it very much because we have this nice little thing happening here in the center and it looks like we worked really hard on creating that right on that foundation, but we cheated. We did a foundation on a foundation, which I think is pretty much genius, don't you think? Do love. It makes me want to do quilt blocks all by just putting mini foundations on top of a foundation. We'll have to do just one block like that at some point. 
And then if you like that block, make a whole quilt out of that one kind of block. But I do like it very much. So I hope you do too. I hope it was okay for our 20th block. I do plan on wrapping this series up with one more video, possibly fixing things, maybe embellishing a few things, just talking about the whole series a little bit. I am not going to set anything in stone, but that is my plan to do that as soon as I have a little bit of time. And I will be starting another series Probably not like this. It might be just a series of just all different unusual quilt blocks. Not cohesive. I know I'm not going to do that for the next one. I just want to show you guys some different quilt blocks. Okay, that's it, folks. I will take pictures of this. Thank you so much. For those of you who have been with me through block number one, I can't thank you enough. I have gotten such good feedback on this series, and so many of you have made the blog. Some of you have made things so incredibly beautiful that it makes me want to cry happy tears like I gave birth to all those blocks. <laughs> I will see you again, though, in this series as we wrap things up. I do want to do at least one more video. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back with more soon. Bye! You can get caught up on this series by clicking the playlist in the top right hand corner. I will be making many more quilt blocks, all kinds. Please subscribe so you don't miss them.